Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Last Lap podcast here in the summer break. All right, we've had a we've, we've got some time off from the Formula One at the moment, but it doesn't mean that there are no Formula One stories for us to talk about. And I'm joined by Tom O's to talk about those, as well as another very special guest. Look at him. Look at Minton. He, Look at he's, him. he's just been pouring <laughs> up my hand because he wants attention, don't you? I, w- I was wondering if he was going to curl up on the, on no. the table for this time. He no. seems to be, you're on a mad one today, aren't you, mate? He is. He's... Look, look at the camera, Minton. Look at camera five. Camera five. Camera, camera five. five. It's there, it's there. No, 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 it's fixated no, no. on right. his father. Um, thank right, you for mate. joining us wherever you are in the world, wherever mm. you're audio only, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that. Don't forget, rate in five stars, mm. good comments, all that. Or Very YouTube, important. where you can see our faces, you can see the sausage dog. This is one to watch on YouTube, I guess. I was going to say, yeah. If, you, if you're listening on Spotify now, then obviously give us the five star, but then hop on over to YouTube because on my camera right now, you can see the bunda of it. <laughs> The wonder of a sausage. I don't think you can see the rest of him. Maybe you can, I don't know. But on my camera, he's just, it's botox. Just botox. That's, that's all you need, mate, isn't it? He's got, you know, he, he take, we take care of him. You know, he, 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 he likes to get his cardio in. I was saying you know, to you, I think he's the smoothest dog that mm. I've ever come across. I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't think I've ever come across a sheenier, mm. you know. Uh, he shines in the sun, doesn't he? Yeah, he is. He it? is aerodynamic, like you were saying. He is. He's you know? the RB19 of, of dogs, I think. Get him on the Formula One grid yeah. and he'd be faster than a Williams. Is that's the... all I'm saying. <laughs> that's that's saying a lot because Williams is pretty rapid. Yeah, um, I know. okay, faster than a house. Yeah, so obviously this is the first, well, the first weekend after after no race. Um, there has been a little bit of news knocking about, but obviously we are in the summer break, which is typically the time of year. I mean, we all remember what happened last summer break with a certain Mr. Sebastian Vettel announcing their retirement Indeed. and the knock-on effect of that. R- remind everyone what happened after that. Well, well it was it was carnage after that. I'll be honest with you. I think I think that was the best. That created the greatest silly season. Mm, I reckon we've had there, in like the it? last 10 years. Mm. I, I honestly think. Because the knock-on effect of that obviously was a spare seat at Aston Martin, which was then um, not vacated. What's the opposite of vacated? Mm, oh, yeah. In... in a, a, incated. Um, inputted. Inputted by Fernando Alonso. <laughs> uh, decided he was going to swap Alpine for Aston Martin, which obviously left Alpine with a simple decision to make and choosing Oscar Piastri. Very simple. He did not want to be chosen. Um, and <laughs> contrary to reports, uh, had <laughs> basically claimed that he wasn't going to be driving for Alpine um, for yep. this season that we are in right now. That was, that was the greatest. Mark Webber. Mark Webber. Yeah, Mark he, Webber. He, he definitely he definitely wrote that. I think that was, that was the greatest point of it all, really. That was like, that was iconic, and it's that still was up, it's still on his Twitter. Button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oscar's yeah, yeah. Twitter, he's kept that up. What is the wording again? I can't remember. Um, oh God, it's uh, it should be like em- embellished onto my brain. But it's, it's something along the lines of like. Um, <laughs> Contrary to reports, or like Alpine released a statement today. Yeah, without my kind of without, consent. Yeah, without my consent. Without, yeah, without yeah. my approval. Um, yeah, it was very, very corporate down the line. But I love it. Was very, it, it was very passive aggressive, though, as well it as was, corporate, I think. It was. You, you it was very sort of like, these lot are mm. knobheads. I am not driving for you lot. Well, well since, since all of that went over and since all the, the change at, at Alpine, apparently it's been, um, it's been reported that. It was Rossi, Lauren Rossi, who was kind of in charge of the contract situation. Now, obviously, we know that Fernando and Otmar's relationship did get somewhat soured. Yeah. I think Fernando had a few comments for Otmar after he got dropped and that he should be quiet, which is, I mean, classic Fernando stirring the pot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but at the end, of, I right think it speak. was, I think it was more on Rossi than anyone else who, again, he's, he's, he's departed. What well, he's <clears> still, I think, at Alpine, but he's moved, moved elsewhere yeah. within that system. So... Yeah. It stunk. I'm going to be totally real with you. It, it stunk. Like that, that was probably, that was Alpine really proving who Alpine are for me. I think the last like th- five years of Renault slash Alpine Elpine. has, has, has been Alpine. Yeah, yeah, it has. It it's has been very, Al- and, and you know, that, that, that been L after L that kind of silly season is like the 2021 F1 season crescendo. That's mm. an equivalent. So I don't think we're going to get that much excitement mm. in this city season. <laughs> But you never know. Depends. Someone might. Just, Lewis just comes out of the woodwork and goes, "Boom! I'm retiring." Well, X N D A E P. Now, the, the, now. Uh, listen, we, we've been saying for a long time. Yeah, it's, that contract's still not signed. There's a lot of drivers actually who mm. aren't in contracts, and I think we'll get into that um, in a minute because I think you know this seems to be the time of year where these things are kind of sorted. Like 
halfway through the year before your contract. It's a good time to take stock, evaluate how drivers are doing. Mm. If they are out of contract, and we'll get onto it in a little bit. But there are, there's, there's a big variety, I think, in performance level mm. for this season, for the drivers that are out of contract. There's a lot of people that are probably a little bit worried about their seat right now and whether they're going to be in it again next season. But there's well, a lot of drivers who I think are overperforming. And again, we know that in F1, it's not all just about performance, right? So isn't. you can perform really well, but if politics get in the way... Yeah, um, if you're bringing in that Wonga... It helps. Yeah. It mm. opens doors. Yeah, it does. It does. It opens doors for sure. It does. But, but with, with like a coin, usually. I, I don't think a note would be very good at opening a door because it'll just get creased straight away. I don't know. Cause, yeah, they've but, got the plastic ones these days, though, so they've got a little bit more give mm, to them. To get yeah, me, but, but. I, if you fed it through, I reckon you could maybe get behind the... Like, I don't know. We'll I don't know and, and you, you folded it notes now as well. True. You could also fold it into the shape of a key, maybe, if you're really skilled wow, at it. Like so. Proper origami it. Yeah, origami that. <laughs> <laughs> and boom, you're in. So that's what we're saying, basically. Look, let, let's start... To talking a little bit about I want to start with Mercedes mm. um, obviously Mercedes seem to be oh as I'm getting a call from, from Mercedes oh, who's Mercedes. this from they don't want him to talk about him oh basically. man it is actually Toto oh is it mad I right, get him on the phone hello mm -hmm. oh tell him that he sounds like a Terminator okay yeah <laughs> or that he's just really tall I don't know right like, okay I, okay I see what you mean Toto is six wow. foot seven Oh, is Lewis signing the contract? He, he just hung up on me. Really? He, you, he called me. Um, he, that, yeah, that seems rude, to be honest with you. So, Very Toto behaviour, though, I feel. So it, it, it's been confirmed that um, Lewis will not be resigning with Mercedes. Mad. There wow. we go. There's the exclusive lad. And, That's and crazy. Minton will be <laughs> aerodynamic boy <laughs> taking charge. He's getting in the Toto car next season. Toto was listening in. Toto was listening in. Yeah, I was going to say, it. mate. Um, <laughs> the reason, no, the reason I want to talk about Mercedes is because they have been the most consistent um, next team ultimately throughout the course of the season still struggling with bouncing started the mm. season with with no side pod so if you look at the first six races of the year they scored 119 points S last six races 128 okay so pretty consistent in terms of kind of point spread I mean Red Bull first half 249 second half 254 so very consistent them as well yeah and then Everyone else is all over, all the, place. over the shop. Aston Martin, I can already know, uh, are going to be probably the least consistent. Aston Martin have scored oh, what's the, 44 fewer points in the last six than they did in the first six. Mm. And bear in mind, all the points are really coming from one driver. Yeah, and Stroll was kind of unlucky actually as well at the start of the season. The pace was there, but he broke down in Saudi and yeah, had like zero hands for Bahrain. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even, even that, that's the thing. Even though Mercedes have been, I would like, you know, the, the points indicate they've been the next most consistent. They're still struggling with bouncing. I think the drivers seem a bit happy with the car, but what's happened to George? Like, because I, I, I think we saw last year, he, you know, was, could, you know, he beat Lewis in Brazil on his day. He could, he could be up there and fight toe to toe with Lewis, did outscore Lewis over the course of the season, which didn't tell the full story, but uh, what's, what's happened this year? Cause it just seems to have fallen off a bit of a cliff. Yeah. We've seen a big old, drop off in consistency haven't we from George and that, that mm. was the one thing I was really impressed with him last year obviously I know Lewis um, there was reasons why Lewis was inconsistent at times at the start of last mm. year it was because he was testing a lot of stuff for Mercedes had a lot more weight on the car fair enough but George was putting in consistent performances yeah. you'd see him in the top five pretty much mm. I think well there was that record wasn't there where he finished in the top five up until Silverstone with a crash with Joe wasn't yeah it? exactly yeah. Um, so that that was always and I think really throughout his entire career as a whole I've always seen that as a strong point with George is consistency Mr. Saturday Mr. Saturday he's always there he'll always put in he'll always maximise what he can out of the car I feel mm. but this the, since about Miami time mm. it's just it just seems to have it seems to be in qualifying as well yeah it's a big issue yes you've seen well, Baku I think he struggled either in the sprint or mm. in normal quality. Uh, obviously, well, which quality was it where he's like 18th on the grid recently? Uh, well, there was the one in, in Hungary. He got caught out. He massively. got caught out by traffic though as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which was, was kind of... Fault. I mean, again, he's, he's kind of the head of the GPDA, the Grand Prix Drivers Association. So mm. I think when it comes to like queuing up to start a lap, he's going to like abide by the rules somewhat, the which most, I think yeah. kind of caught him out there because everyone else was like every, every, every man for themselves yeah. jumping ahead of him. Um, I, I, think, I think as well, like maybe the, th this is the issue, right? Because every other team apart from Red Bull is 
has had to somewhat change their direction in order to find this path that Red Bull started on and have continued on and they haven't deviated. Like if you look at the Red Bull at the start of last season and the Red Bull now, mm -hmm. like fundamentally it hasn't changed a huge amount. Yes, of course, there's been slight, you know, modifications to the side ponds and that, but they've, they've broadly speaking been on the right direction. Whereas George has had to, you know, both him and Lewis were really struggling with the car last year. Yeah, do you reckon a Mercedes is the car that's probably changed the most? of any car just fundamentally maybe since the start of last year I think the, the Williams has changed a lot as well because yeah. that was very similar to the Mercedes yeah because they started with like those <clears throat> no side pods um, they just changed it a lot quicker than yeah the Mercedes did and you can you can see with the Mercedes how they're having to like it's got the like in order to get the crash structure in they've still got the little where well, they've got they've got the new side pods but they've still got them little kind of fins that kind of stick yeah. out of the front and you can see it, it, it feels like a bit of a compromise and ultimately it's like a little Frankenstein car like, yeah like to put like lots of different ideas together and literally like e even now with the with the cost cap when you look at it up close you can see all the different carbon weaves and it's quite kind of messy mm. because you can't afford to just like Mercedes would have been in the past to just create a whole new you know side panel they've got a kind of retrofit what they've already got yeah which which I, I i don't fundamentally dislike that i just think that yeah i i still think mercedes consistency given all of the issues given they've gone through like from one side pod philosophy to, to an entire different one and you know lewis feels too far front in the car whatever all, all these issues that the drivers have for mercedes to still be consistently at least the third quickest car I think they've been consistent over the course of this entire season at least the third quickest yes there's been Aston Martin was quicker than them at the start yeah Ferrari have been quicker than them at times McLaren have been kind of in certain recently conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but like Mercedes have always been <clears throat> up there yeah so I do think they are you know when when it comes to you know Lewis and and, and his future at the team I still think they're his best shot uh, I, I uh, agree to Red Bull. Oh, I mean ultimately the, the, the championship doesn't lie he's third in the standings mm. right now <clears throat> and I think um, you know Fernando Alonso obviously had been there for a while because of that strong start to the season but since the Aston Martin drop off you're right Mercedes have been the most consistent mm. package um, to deliver like good scoring points positions I think you're right um, if Lewis is thinking of trying to get that eighth championship at some point over the mm. next couple of years there's no, I, you know, my stance on Ferrari and like delivering consistently. They've been a bit better recently, but you know that mm. once they're in a title fight, something will go wrong. Mm. Aston Martin have dropped off. McLaren, fine. You know, they've they've just arrived back on the scene with some with yep. with some strong performances. Yep. But they seem to have a locked in driver pairing for a while. You know, Lando and Oscar both young. Yep. They could deliver. And they should hopefully give yeah. Lando the confidence that, <coughs> yeah, I can hopefully bank on this team with yeah, exactly, the yeah. new management in charge and all that to actually be something that can offer him a, a title charge. Yeah, exactly. So I think if you are Lewis right now and you're thinking, right, cool, I want to go over the title charge in like the next two years, I think Mercedes is probably the place to stay right now. Even though I would love a, a silly season that involves Lewis yeah. at some point since like 2013. Yeah. Yeah, I, that would be great <laughs> if you could just make that happen at some that point. It's been a I while. Mean, they, they, again, those rumors, those Ferrari rumors that come up every year, that like, I would not be surprised if that comes from like Lewis's team somewhat, right? Internally. Yeah, just Plant, being like planting those seeds, just for yeah, a little yeah. Bit yeah. Of extra to, negotiation. Do you want to pay rise, Lewis? <laughs> yeah, obviously we can sort that out. You... <laughs> oh yeah, he's actually really loves red. His favorite yeah. color is red. Yeah, and just yeah. put that out in the, in the media. Yeah. Boom. Just sorted. Yeah, Alfa Romeo. He's mate. going on. He's going on. He's going to Italy on holiday. Wow, that's confirmed. That's all it? I'm saying, mate. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. He's going to Como. <laughs> <laughs> Como is lovely. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, it's a beautiful I've place. heard, I've heard go. good things. I've heard very yeah. good things. Um, yeah. Well, because Lewis, how? Yeah, apparently so. Yeah. How do you how do you reflect on though Spa? Because obviously, if we're talking about the the next half of this season, ten races, um, and Red Bull seem to. Yes, I think Spa played to their strengths, mm -hmm. um, which when you're strong everywhere makes it I was so about to ominous. Say, yeah, we we looked at a graph before this um this before we started recording. Mm. And it basically shows like a performance profile of every element, I guess, that you that goes into overall car speed. Yep. Shout out straight out Blake, by the way. Yeah, shout out Blake's Blake, graph. Blake's friend graph. of the channel, friend of the podcast. Yep. Um 
it's, it's obviously straight line speed, high uh, speed corners. I'll put it, I'll put it there corners. you, know, and then you can like, really have, a little, have a little sensation. What, 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 do you, what do you find most interesting about this? Again, Blake did a video with Autosport, really good video. Um, check it out. And yeah, he's gone through kind of, this is based on like qualifying pace. Yeah. And then like kind of straight line speed, High speed corner and medium speed corner and low speed corner. Yeah, I think the uh, the, the obviously the most important, the most interesting thing is the fact that Red Bull are top of everything. Yes, like literally everything. All there is no four weakness. categories. That all four categories. There is just a line, a purple line at the top <laughs> of boom. Here's yeah. where Red Bull are. Straight line speed. They are miles clear of everybody else. I mean, we talk about the Williams being a rocket ship in a straight line. And to be fair, they are third. They match with Ferrari in terms of straight line speed. But they're still nowhere near Red Bull in terms mm. of straight line speed. And obviously, we talked about DRS. We'll come on to that in a little bit. Red Bull's DRS advantage is so strong. The car is just so slippery in a straight line. But then on top of that, high speed corners top, medium speed corners top, and low speed corners top as well. It's um, grim. Because a lot of people have talked about like whether we could, you know, stunt them a little bit. And we've seen in the past where there's been like little regulation changes that come in and just, or, or we're just like raising the level of the floor slightly, not for any reason mm. in particular. We just kind of want to do it, guys. And but in reality, they're just trying to hurt the team that's at the top mm -hmm. and just try and close the field. You can't do that when mm. Red Bull are best at everything. Mm. You know? Exactly. There's not one thing that, again, you know, when they changed the floors to, to nerf the Mercedes, which was obviously the, the thought process behind that, you could do that because not every car was low rake. Mm -hmm. Most cars were high rake, so it only hit the Mercedes and the Mercedes yeah. clone, which was the racing point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it get, then that, that's a prime example. So Auto Motor and Sport, the German publication have been, uh, have reported that there's conversations around potentially banning DRS for qualifying which mm. would, again, the Red Bull DRS advantage is something that's clear, that's been talk talked about loads, that they have kind of this, you know, extra level of efficiency that they can bring from dropping their DRS. Yeah. Um, my, own, my only kind of caveat around that, because I, I, do, I do think it would, yeah, it would disproportionately hurt the Red Bull. <coughs> it would also, you know, hurt other teams who have efficient DRS, but they have the most efficient, so it would, so they, yeah proportionally hurt them the most but i think does anyone remember uh, monza 2019 um all of the uh shenanigans trying to get over the line all i'm saying is that if there's no drs then the power of the toe it's is so much even more, more yeah. prevalent yeah i think i think the power of having two cars in q2 and two cars in q3 because then teammates can work together, work together yeah. i think that is I, I like that side of it because then it's more okay but it's really so you know checo not getting to q3 five but, sessions in a row yeah. would hurt max more yeah because he wouldn't be able to necessarily work with a teammate mm -hmm. to make sure all right we'll have one run with you ahead one one run with you ahead and we'll alternate between races whatever um but i do think i just hate that's one part of q1 q2 for qualifying i hate is this whole like people battling for for to not be the lead car and then you get like Monza 2019 which was hilariously bad yeah, yeah where you had like a glug of like eight cars in Q3 and just no one made it no, no, no one no. made it to the line Nico yeah. Hulkenberg locked up at doing about 40 miles an hour yeah. locked up and just went straight because he didn't want to be in front yeah. and then it was just like yeah like you say half of them made it half of them didn't that's, yeah. my, that's my caveat about banning DRS but I do think it would reduce Red Bull's advantage. So I don't know where I sit. Where, where, do you, where would you sit with that? Uh, see, I've always been one of those people when it comes to qualifying. I've been like, I don't think there's any point yet in in having the DRS zones in the same place they are for the race. I say just either you can use it anywhere or don't use it at all. Mm -hmm. There's always been my kind of stance with that. I don't feel crazily passionately about it, but I think you're right. The only concern I would have is that you do end up with those trains or that whoever's at the front of a train he just immediately isn't going to get a good time on the board that's the that's the again imagine but then the everyone has drs anyway so i suppose mm. you know you you still got the toe i guess like in, in qualifying today say a belgian mm -hmm. you still get the toe off your teammate you've just got dr you've just both got drs as well yeah so maybe it kind of but, but the out relative the gain from toe is, mm. is is less because you are like it's it's proportionate. You're going faster anyway. I, yeah. I, I, was it when in old Top Gear when Clarkson was driving the the Veyron? Yeah. Like maybe I think it was when James May drove the Veyron and he maxed it and he was saying about like to get 
you know, to, to go from naught to 200 takes so many horsepower, but then to get an extra 10 horsepower, it takes proportionally way more yeah. because like air resistance is you, you're going quicker. So if you're, if you're, and, and I think as well, like if, if F1, I think part of F1 seeing, seeming more like sustainable, like, you know, purposefully, you know, pushing a bigger hole in the, in the air and going slower ultimately <coughs> kind of goes somewhat against that because I, I think in an ideal world, in an ideal world for me, for qualifying, <coughs> you just have access to DRS whenever you want it. Yeah, like, like well, yeah, so you don't yeah, have yeah. the zones because then that also that that's the quickest the car's going to go. Yeah, and also, also it's skills more... to be able to use it at certain points because there's going to be certain exactly. areas of the track where <clears throat> it's, it's a little risky. bit sketchy or it's mm. a little bit more risky to use. A one thirty R Suzuka. Yeah, do you dare keep it open? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that. Jesus Christ! That's, see, now we're opening a whole new kind of worms yeah. of aeroplane accidents. At well, that, yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. Obviously, there's a there's a danger component which I completely understand, but I think that. Yeah, I, I don't know where I sit on it. Let us let us know in the comments below if you're watching on, on YouTube. What I think, do you think the, the idea of banning DRS? Yeah, probably? yeah, yeah. Or whether to just... Uh, because it would hurt everywhere. Red Bull more so than... Mm. And we've talked about this in the past. Like, there doesn't seem to be a clear way of, like, nerfing the Red Bull um, like there was with cutting the floors. Yeah. Um, but maybe this could... Loads happen. of little things. But then qualifying, like, they're not dominant in qualifying anyway. Well, no, Sergio Perez isn't dominant in well, qualifying. Yeah, but, yeah, but again, the, the gaps Max has got, like, he's not dominant. Like, no. Lewis beat him, like, Charles beat him, both Baku sprint and Yeah, no, race. true, true, true. The gaps true. are typically, like, even Silverstone, it was like a couple of tenths. I think, yeah, yeah. I think they've got a couple of, you know, a tenth to two tenths with Max in hand yeah. most qualifying sessions. Yeah. But I wouldn't call that dominant. And, and either way, even if you nerf them slightly in qualifying... And you've got, oh man, Max is starting second. He's still going to win anyway. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like we started yeah. sixth. Or did he start, it was sixth, Six, wasn't it? Yeah. Bar. And you could start anywhere, realistically. You could start in the Netherlands and I would have been like, yeah, he's probably yeah. going to win the Belgian still, Grand Prix. He still had a whole pit stop in hand. I was yeah. like, oh, can I pit? Because it's fun. And GP yeah. was like, no. <laughs> that but, was so funny. That was such a violation as well, by the way. him Because you know that was like a... Lads, not gonna lie, not being funny. I could, I could pit right now, and I could still win the race. Like, I just want to <laughs> do it because I'm bored. And it's like, man, I feel Sergio Perez here in that after mm. after the fact. Yeah, when you were ahead of him yeah. at the halfway stage of the race, that must that must be a bit of a stinger. Yeah, I I, I think it's, I think it's a matter of again we we talked about this loads with Sergio. Like it, he he just kind of has to accept that he's not he he's not gonna be. He's not the guy to, to beat Max. I think, you know, Max has this, is driving at this insane level and he has this, you know, massive influence within the team. Yeah. And yeah. rightly so. Like, yeah, of course. In the same way that Lewis has built a massive influence within Mercedes doing what he did and, and you know, Bottas would occasionally get close towards the start of the year, but mm -hmm. that was always going to be, yeah, yeah that, was, that was always going to be Lewis's champion. <clears throat> so I, I, I think that, yeah, I maybe may I, I'm I'm not convinced, but I I think what makes it I think what makes it more difficult as well to to and I think why people feel this this boredom is because there isn't this kind of clear number two. We say Mercedes has been the most consistent, but then again you look at like Aston Martin. Now there's been a few rumors knocking about that maybe there was some kind of change that Aston Martin had to make to their car. Um, through like flexi wings or something that it's it's been nothing's been confirmed. Mm. There, there's talk around like these kind of underhand like communications of things and and obviously with the the tire compound changing. I mean, at the start of the year, I, I was very much like, well, not even the start of the year. Like after a few races, I was very much like Aston Martin will be the team, and I do think that they've had this first half of this year with loads of ATR. Yep. So I think. For, for me now, I, I don't see many of the cars changing going forward. I don't see much changing with the Aston Martin. I feel like unless you've got something to fight for, which I guess Aston do, they've got their constructors with Mercedes, but that's not going to happen. They might finish ahead of Ferrari. Um, <coughs> and I don't think McLaren will catch them. But for me, it's just, unless you've got really something to fight for with millions on the line, which Williams, Haas and Alfa Romeo do, because yeah. they're all split by like two points, um, I think everyone's just going to bank their upgrades till next year now. I yeah. don't see too much of the cars changing in the next 10. I mean, I said, I said this on, I remember saying this on one of the shows about Aston Martin. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of similar actually to what we were saying about like straight line speed in it. Where that first, like however many miles an hour, you mm. don't need as much horsepower or whatever. 
the first amount of upgrades to take them from where they were to where they were at the start of the season um, in, in, in the winter feels like it was like a big jump. And then it's almost like after that, it's like, right, okay, cool. We've made all this, all this ground. Mad, we've got to go do some more research in order to then find the next time on top of that. Mm. And whilst they've been, you know, doing the research and, and whatever and putting the hours into the next set of uh, upgrades they're going to bring, mm. the rest of the pack is kind of like, caught up again because mm. they've been gradually bringing theirs rather than that one boom at the start of the season that one massive piece of performance so I think it was kind of always going to happen a little bit I think they were always going to drop back a little bit either way you know they're still top 10 every time you know they're still probably like fourth slash fifth best on the grid at the moment or quickest yeah I, I, I think I, if you Aston Martin having banked up all those points at the start of the season you, yes you'd probably take it yeah I, th I, I think they will improve a little bit I think they will gradually bring some upgrades as the mm. season goes on. But yeah, you're, I don't think we'll see a massive, massive change in overall order from this point onwards because there's, mm. there's no point unless you are down towards the bottom of the field and two points makes a massive difference. Yeah, I, I mean, Aston Martin's jump mm. at the start of this year, this year was, it was pretty unprecedented. Yeah. Like, and, and I think, again, if, if you said to them at the end of last year... Or start of last year as well, especially. Especially the start of... At the end Jesus of 2023, Christ, you'd be like yeah. fourth in the construction. I would literally... Like, absolutely. They were mate. scrapping with Williams at the back, <laughs> weren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think... So I think in that context, I think they'll be okay. And again, they've just moved into the new facility and all that. So I, I think they've got... You know, they've got a very good driver in Fernando. They've got Lance Stroll, who does a job. I mean, I, I know Aston, Aston Martin have come out and said he's been very unlucky. I mean, has has he? I think there's been a couple of strategy things that haven't maybe gone his way. Um, and I think Saudi, he had a great, he pulled that move on science, didn't he? Yeah, it was, it was move. Like, I think he was like sixth and then he broke down. And then he broke down. But other than that, would I say he's been particularly unlucky? I know they're, they're going to defend their driver and, and you know, they, they should. Their that, that's their job, right? And their literal, yeah, Lawrence's literal son. So of yeah. course they're going to defend their driver. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not convinced... But again, that, that lineup's not changing next year, is it? Come it on. Oh, God. Now, that would be the silliest of seasons, I reckon. Mm. If, if, if Lance was to lose his, lose his yeah. drive, that would be the silliest of seasons. Because that's genuine, like, DNA on the line there. You that's know what? Biological father has <laughs> ditched his own son. Levels of silly season. Yeah. The, Lance is the biological son. Fernando's mm. the adopted son. Yeah, Fernando is the adopted um, son, who's still somehow the biological son's dad. It's a very it's a very strange <laughs> family tree they've got going on at Aston Martin right now. I could definitely what I could see happening, which would I, I would I would hate this because he deserves a seat for, for me, but I could definitely see like if Alpha Tauri you know, there's all this talk of Hugo Boss, which I'm, I think we'll get into. Um, but he, I could see him going to Aston and being like a reserve. Well, goes out, going to Alpha Tauri and being reserve. Uh, I could see Sonoda going to Aston. Oh, Jesus. Because the Honda Lord. League yeah, being yeah, a reserve, oh, which would break my heart. But I could actually, I could please. see that happening. Oh, no, I don't, I don't need that. They've already got enough reserves. They've got Van Dorn, they've got Drogovic. Sonoda as well. How many reserves do you need? That's well, under 18s at that listen, point. You're not right. even in the reserves. This is why, and look, we, we both believe in Yuki Quinn, right? We, we do. We early doors. We do. But I, I want to, so, what I, a man. this is a, a question a on my quiz for my live show I did on Friday, right? Mm -hmm. So, Yuki's P17 in the standings right now. Yeah. What do you think his average finishing position is? If you're um, listening at home, t take a minute, have a, have a think. I reckon it's 12. A average finishing position. You're saying twelve because because the amount of eleventh he had. So, so it, it's season. a number point something. Point. Okay. So I, I've got I've gone for one decimal place as well. Okay. Nice I'll, I'll go for. I think it's going to be closer to third. Well, I think it's twelve point five. I reckon smack bang in between twelve, 12 and thirteen. Five. Yeah, yeah. Because I can only remember one stinker he's had this season where mm -hmm. he's been like fifteenth or below. Okay. So I'm I'm slapping you. He has that. finished every race. He's, he's, he's mm. got to finish every single race. What a man! Know. Takes a lot of skill, a lot of consistency. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, mate, you've almost smashed it there. What, what is it? Twelve point eight. Shit! Shit! When you said almost thirteen, I was like, oh, he might Fuck, actually he might get it. Actually get he it. Might yeah, yeah, it. He's fumbled it. So yeah, P twelve point eight average finishing position. <laughs> I think that tells more of the story of, of, of Yuki's season. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. been very good. He's been um, unlucky not to score more points, and I think that's. I didn't even realise he was 17th in the standing. Yeah, yeah. Thought he was higher. Then he got three points. Honest. Yeah. He's got yeah, three cool. P10s and three P11s and a P12. 
mental. So see, that's that is actually consistency. That's actually impressive. Yeah, it's a shame that points don't go down to twelve. Yeah, which I, again, I think that's why if Ricardo comes in and and, and matches or, or beats Yuki, I still think Yuki's done like a a fantastic job mm-hmm. this year. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't think you can look past him because well, let, let's now let's have a look at all of the drivers that are out of contracts. Mm-hmm. Um, starting with Lewis. What's the hold up? Like, well, like, what is it. the hold up? He just loves the drama, Mick. That, that's what it is. It, it's, it's, the, it's the sort of... <laughs> We're talking about Mick Schumacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just, he loves the drama. I, I, I honestly think Lewis, Lewis needs to know mm. that what he's going to get next season is exactly what he wants it to be. Mm. And that's calm. And he's, he's earned enough XP during his time <laughs> in Formula One to deserve that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I, I think we, we've seen this so many, it's the last like three seasons now, I think yeah. there's been this question mark of lads, it's August. He hasn't signed a contract. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, him and Toto just love to do this little salsa dance around mm. the, the, the pen and paper each year. I, I honestly do think he's going to like, he's going to sign with Mercedes for next year. Uh, there, there's, there's obviously rumors about Ferrari and, and whatever, but unless something above Mercedes in the food chain almost happens that's crazy in this silly season. I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't see him retiring yet. There's been no, he hasn't been giving vibes of that. No, because he's, no, no, he's no, no, been no. giving hints at Mercedes contracts and whatever. He's not made any hints to, to retirement or anything. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's either Mercedes or something else. So, and unless, uh, 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 unless a seat at Ferrari becomes available mm. or, I, just, I, I don't know. I don't see anything like that happening. The only reason I can think that it's been delayed, uh, and I do think he's, he's 100% <clears throat> going to extend at Mercedes, yeah. I think that he's surely, surely, this makes so much sense, he's going for some degree of ownership within the team, <clears throat> as well as being, the, you look at, obviously he's got his, um, he's got his stake in the Broncos. Mm-hmm. Lewis has a lot of business ventures that he's invested in. You've got like Neat Burger and all that that he, he is involved with. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at, Sports people buying into and actors buying into franchises. What you got? Is it Russell Westbrook's uh, on the board at Leeds? He was at Leeds. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, he's part of the ownership group there. Obviously, you got like Reynolds, McAnany. We've talked about that with Alpine already. Mm. Um, you know, for Lewis mm-hmm. to buy and own a stake within that Mercedes Formula One team mm-hmm. makes so much sense. He's been yeah. Mercedes affiliated for his entire career, even yeah. back at the McLaren days. It was Mercedes <coughs> who kind of first kind of reached out to him. He's always driven exactly, Mercedes yeah. engines. He's so affiliated with that team. He's already got sports investment out elsewhere. For me, that's, you know, having that added layer of complexity because th- the thing is that team is a third owned by Toto, mm. a third owned by Mercedes Group, Daimler, whatever you want to call it, and a third owned by Ineos. Yeah. So, someone would have to dilute for Lewis to get in. Yeah. I could I could maybe see everyone diluting a bit and then just 25% each and Lewis taking 25% of that team. I, I, could, I could see that. That and would I be reckon crazy. Trying to negotiate that is maybe why. That would be crazy though, imagine. He's driving for the team and owns part of it as well. Mm. Have we ever seen that in Formula 1? Well, we have probably in like the back old, the old... Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, we... Um, it was... Well, Bruce McLaren. Yeah, 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 when, yeah. When he kind of... He started that team. Oh, he was... There's definitely been other examples of that. That's a good question, actually. There, like, will, there will have been, but like olden times. Yeah. Oh, I, I yeah. I don't mean yeah. that in a disrespectful way, but when there was like a lot more independence on the grid. Yes. Whereas, whereas now, now it's like, like share structure and all that. Yeah. And big, big, big. His Honda, his Jag, it's, it's yeah. a lot more sort of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, I'd love that. For, I think that that would be such a savvy, like savvy for all parties as well. Mm-hmm. Savvy yeah. for Toto to like, you know, because Lewis will eventually retire. It's going it's to happen eventually. And so mm-hmm. keeping Lewis as, as a big part of that team going forward, the name Lewis Hamilton, is that's, that that would be huge. I think Lewis I, Hamilton, Mercedes, Monster, Toto, Wolf, Ineos, Patronus Racing. Damn. <laughs> there you go. Rolls off the top. It really does. It really, really does. It's a better name than Hugo Boss Balls Racing. Yeah. That's been, Can we uh, just talk about that briefly? Because that stinks. <laughs> that really, that really, like, I'm going to be honest, that honks. I can't, I cannot see... 
I, 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 I will refuse to call it that. I'll just start calling it Toro Rosso again. I'm not, I'm yes. not calling it Hugo Boss Bulls Racing. Yes. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, obviously Alpha Tauri potentially being renamed. It's yeah. been confirmed. It's not going to be Alpha Tauri next year. Yeah. Hugo Boss. Which is Hugh, good to be fair. I, could, I don't really like Alpha Tauri. Yeah. Whatever. Like, it, it didn't catch on. Like, no, 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 people still called it Toro Rosso. The clothes are shit. Yeah. Th th yeah. They're not great. And, and their shops are very empty. I yeah. went to one in Hungary and it was just dead. So yeah. Yeah. kind of bad. There's one in London. I remember driving past it being like, that is massive, but I didn't yeah. see a single person the go staff, in. Staff were just staring at me like, yeah. can I do something to help? Because I've not done anything <clears throat> yeah. all day. They've had six um, Red Bulls that day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely just like pinging off like caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Please don't help. Help. <laughs> I have nothing to do but drink Red Bull. <laughs> 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 that makes sense at the time perfectly um, no so and then Hugo Boss they sponsor Aston Martin at the moment mm. but there is talk of them taking over like a yeah, title sponsorship I think Helmut Marko has already talked about title sponsorship <coughs> being you know they retain ownership of the team <coughs> which is a yeah. bit messy I still just they should just sell it like just just sell it please just sell it to like Andre or something um, like I'd rather see that than some yeah. like and then Hugo <coughs> I mean Hugo Boss Bulls Racing like surely not Surely not. That is a fucking awful name. That is so bad. If you're going to sell it to a brand and you're going to have, well, not like, sell call it, to it a brand. Boss GP or something. Yeah. Well, that, that was a, that was a racing series, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. If, if you, I don't know if it's still a thing. I'm not sure. Maybe, but it might be to be fair. Boss, yeah. Boss, because they don't even, like they've, they've separated the brands out as well, haven't they? It's not Hugo, like you buy it's Boss. Boss mm. is a brand and Hugo's a brand. They've kind of separated it out now. Oh, really? Yeah, because it used to all be... I remember I used to work at a um, clothing shop in, uh, in honest, Bournemouth at uni. I thought it was just one man. And they had, his name was Hugo Boss. Well, well yeah, yeah. So, so so it is. It's like one brand, but I think now... You know, like you've seen Boss, they've got like AJ promoting it. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. On, on the Aston, you just see Boss. It doesn't say Hugo. Oh, yeah. It just says Boss. Oh, so God. they've like separated the brands out. So... I, I, I think thought, if you're going to get a title sponsor and then name it after the title sponsor... Hmm. Because it's different to like Aston Martin Cognizant Racing or whatever or yeah. Mercedes because that <coughs> you've still got the, the name of the, the team yeah. in the you get me mm. but you're naming the, the team after you it's not good Bosch it's not GP, good because Boss GP sounds a bit like Braun GP yeah yeah I mean, yeah, yeah that kind of gives that that same kind of vibe it's though. just a better name Hugo Boss Bulls Racing it's the Bulls bit it's, it's the Bulls sends me. Hugo Boss Bulls <laughs> <laughs> the Boss Bulls <laughs> makes me think of that that's all I can think of Toro <laughs> Boss Toro Bosso Toro Bosso I Toro like Bosso. that Hugo mm. Alpha Hugo <laughs> <laughs> Hugo Tauri. There's, there's, there's lots of combinations. Look, we've already come for. up with some better suggestions. Let us know again in the comments if, if you've got yeah, any Yeah, what would you name? Yeah. Alpha, no, Red Bull Sugar Free Racing. <laughs> Zero <laughs> Caffeine GP. Yeah, it's, uh, days of caffeine <clears throat> behind us. Um, all right, let's talk, let's talk about some other... Well, actually, let's talk of the to be Hugo Boss Bulls racing drivers mm. of uh, Daniel Ricciardo mm. and Yuki Tsunoda because mm. they are both out of contract at the end of yeah. this year. And is Daniel Ricciardo even in contract? He's just like... Yeah, he's just <clears throat> he's just kind of... He's just there. It's he's just vibing. Um, look, I, I said this before. I say it again. I think Red Bull will have learned enough about Daniel after 12 races, which they'll have had by the end of this year. 12 races mm -hmm. with him. They'll have learned enough about Daniel to know whether... right. Is he the guy to to do as good, if not a better job than Checo? Or is did it not work and goodbye? That 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 time's done. Do you think there's a world in which Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Sano does the driver lineup next season? I don't. No. I, I don't I don't believe that happens. I, I, I think that I, d I don't think Daniel Ricciardo would want that either. No. I, don't, I, I think I I I can only imagine he's taken this on. With the knowledge that, or well, not the knowledge, but the hope that there is at least that there's a chance that he could be in the Red Bull next season. Yeah, and I don't it, think he does it otherwise because he turned down drives at Haas, Williams, whatever last season. Yeah. AlphaTauri is the worst car on the grid. It's not even a question. Well, maybe it's a question, but in terms of the constructors' championship, it's not. Whereas with a Haas or whatever, you know, there's maybe oh, they might be seventh quickest, or they could even be sixth. Or at least Haas have got quality pace. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. So. For him to have taken that step down, there has to be at least a little little bit of a, a hope or maybe even a slight expectation mm. that he's going to be in that car next season. Yeah, I, I think that maybe the only way that Ricardo would stay at that team is if this title sponsor who comes in like really wants him and like, you know, makes him an amazing deal to like stay 
at that team. Yeah. Um, say Hugo Boss do take over and then they're like, we really want Daniel to be like a brand advocate for Hugo Boss and having him in that car with all the pull that he has. Yeah, maybe they 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 throw it throw a bag at him. The, the problem um, the problem is for again for a a change of name like that or a change of team, I guess like that. Mm. You're not actually changing under the hood no, of no, the no. team. It's just gonna have a different name. Just the and paint on the outside. Yeah, and it's just gonna be affiliated. You're gonna get free Hugo Boss stuff. Yeah, yep. do you know what I'm saying? So realistic, like if if Honda came along and went, I right, boom, we're buying mm. Alpha Tower now. It's gonna be Honda Racing. There might actually be a part of Daniel that's like, uh, let me stay here. Yeah. If, if that Red Bull seat isn't available, I'm going to stay here because mm. this is a project. And in two years, this could be a car that's like top half on the grid because of the investment and the motorsport know-how that Honda have. Mm -hmm. Not going to be the case with Hugo Boss. Because it's, Red Bull will still own the team. Yeah. It's just a name. It's deal. just a name change. It's still Alpha Tauri, un, like realistically. Yes. It's like with, with Alfa Romeo. It's like, no, that team's still Sauber. It's yeah. just Alfa Romeo have the naming rights. Mm. But it's not an Alfa Romeo manufactured team. You know what I mean? But so when it so becomes Audi, it, it will be. That, that's the, that's exactly. the difference. You know exactly. Right? Which, you know, again, that, you know, I, I could, I think it's way more likely that Ricardo, you know, you know I do, if he does really well, in this remaining half of the season and, and gives confidence to the rest of the, the grid that he could be that guy, then yeah, maybe um, if, he, if he doesn't get called up by Red Bull, then maybe Audi, uh, may, maybe, maybe um, if science moves to Audi, then maybe Ferrari, there was talk of that potentially like before he made the move to, to McLaren um, from, from Renault. So I don't know. I, I, I think that, Either way, yeah, Ricardo is not in that team next year, as far as I'm concerned. And I think I, I still, I think the more likely for me is that he replaces Checo. I still, I still think, yeah, I still, yeah. I still, if I had to put money on mm. it today, that's the one I'd put on. Um, Yuki, I'm, I'm less. I don't. Know, I I'm, just don't really know for Yuki because I, I think there's actually there's like. I don't want to see him get battered by Verstappen in a Red Bull. No, no, no. I, I, I <laughs> and I think he, I think he would. I'm going to be totally real. Yuki Sonoda is not. For me, I love Yuki. He's literally my favorite driver on the grid in terms of just like bar Lando. Um, but I think I don't see him as the guy who could get in a car and challenge for a title. Agreed. There's some drivers that can, that are like generational, that go through all the junior formulas and batter everyone. Your Piastri's and Russell's and Lando's and Leclerc's and whatever. Mm. And they will go on and win championships in great cars. Yuki is the type of driver who, if you slapped him in a a car that's like the fifth best on the grid, yep. he would maximize the most out of it. And you'd go, man, he's a good driver. Mm. Like a Pierre Gasly. Or like Sergio had been in, in yeah, the past yeah. as well, right? But yeah, I, I just don't, I wouldn't want to see him in a Red Bull. He, 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 would, he would get pummeled, mm. I think. I think that there's just, there's a difference about these, these drivers who just come in as rookies and just hit the ground running. Yeah. Like Charles yeah. Leclerc in that sal bar like Oscar Piastri is doing in the McLaren. Yeah. I think like Lewis did in the Mercedes. Obviously that's a different era with loads more testing, but but still the point stands. Um like, you know, go back to like Fernando at a Minardi and, and Vettel when he was in that Sauber at, at you know the U US Grand Prix got Toro points. Rosso as well, like that yeah. first season. Like uh, yeah Matt and Max in the Toro Rosso obviously as well. Like, you know, there, there's these drivers who are <clears> the cut above and I think yeah. those names are so few and far between. And I think that Yuki's like a great driver and he could he could have a really solid career in F1. But do I think he's... And, and I think he would be a number two to, to Red Bull. Uh, maybe Red Bull should, you know, could Yuki be a long-term number two to Max and be happy within that role and be a, you know, a Barrichello, a Bottas, one of these drivers who's, you know, is, is content enough and gets the odd win mm -hmm. and will get podiums and, and, and can be that guy. So, yeah, I, I don't know about Yuki. I, I think, you know, his, his ties to Honda are so strong as well. And with that breaking, I think that really does hinder his chances. And you've got Liam Lawson in, in the back. I, I think Lawson Sonoda, I think mm. that's still maybe likely for next year. Yeah. I, I, if I had to put money on it, I'd say Lawson Sonoda next year. I, yeah. If I was to put money on it, yes. I think, I think it's like the most, I think that team is like the most fuck knows yeah. out of all of them in terms of like what, who I actually think the driver lineup is going to be. Because it could go a lot of different ways. Mm. Like you could end up with Daniel taking on the seat at Alpha Tari, and then where does Sergio Perez end up? You could end up with Yuki. I don't know. You know, there's a link at Aston Martin. Mm. I know Lance Stroll is realistically not going to get dropped, 
by Aston, but mm. if by some miracle that happened, then Yuki would be a shoe in there. Yeah. You've then got all the fucking Red Bull juniors all over the place. I mean, like Christian Horner apparently was quoted as saying they want to actually try and decrease the amount of drivers in the Red Bull Academy. It's a very weird... They seem to not know this middle ground, yeah. the Red Bull Junior system, because they've gone out and gone like, right, fuck it. Like three years ago, they had no one. Mm. And you ended up with like Brendan Hartley mm. in uh, Toro Rosso, and then more recently had DeVries. Because no one was ready. And they were like, well, we don't want to do that again. Well, let's go and get like nine junior drivers. And they've done that. And now they're watching F2 and they don't know who the fuck anyone is because there's too many cars that have <laughs> their brand on and they're finding it hard to follow. So they're like, we're going to take everyone away yeah. again. I just feel like they need to decide on like a, on a middle ground. But yeah, either, either way, I think Liam Lawson is like the best fit. Yeah, and I, if I was sure. put money on him sure. or on anyone getting promoted from the junior ca junior program, it would be him. Mm. I think Iwas has dropped off a little bit in F2, like a tiny bit, but it's still a great shout as well. Then other than that, I don't think anyone else is ready. Yeah. No, I, I think I'd agree with that. Again, yeah, they've got what? Um, I think they've got eight. Powdy, Hadjar, Alga, Alga um, uh, Maloney, Crawford, Maloney. Crawford, yeah. Um, they've got so many. Iwas, obviously. Like, it, it's, yeah, you're right. They, they've gone for that kind of scattergun approach and, mm. Whereas you look at, say, like Vesti is part of Mercedes and he's, well, he was leading after he, he, he messed up in Spa. But he's still, I think Vesti, for me, I think he'll win it this year. Um, and then McLaren, they don't Victor really have Martin any superiority. juniors. Well, Victor Ollie Martin, Behrman, Ollie superiority. Behrman, Nick Charles Leclerc. Yeah, had it here there's some good, some good juniors, legit, coming up. Yeah, this, this, F2, <clears throat> this F2 season's sick, for sure. And, and I think, again, well... Actually, next driver I want to talk about is Joe Guanyu. Yeah. Um, because he is out of contract at the end of this year. And Bottas isn't, but I still think he's, you know, because F1 contracts, you know, Checo knows, right? That yeah. <laughs> they don't that, necessarily mean anything. Mm. And so I. Oh, do, no. Is that the shredder? Oh, I, God. <laughs> I, I think both, even though Bottas has a contract, I, I, I could see that him being at risk. I think. Joe is out of contract. You've got Teo Porsche there in the background. I was background. about to say this. Um, one of them has to be at risk. Loitering. Because, because Teo Porsche, Teo Porsche I, I think Porsche is going to win F2. Mm -hmm. Either way, even if he doesn't, to be fair, if he doesn't, that kind of stinks a little bit because he's been, this would be his third season now. This would, he is still only mm -hmm. 19. Oh yeah, true. I forgot. Fam. Yeah, he was, he was a child when he got in. Yeah. F2, the first, I forgot about that. Okay, fair enough. I, either way, he is probably one of the best junior drivers in F2 right now. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's him, obviously Vesti, uh, people like Behrman, people like um, Iwasa, and then obviously like, a, what was the other one I was going to say? Um, there was, there was, there was, oh, Martins, Victor Martins mm. from Alpine. Um, but Porsche is affiliated to Sauber and Alfa Romeo, Sauber. yeah? Not if, Alfa Romeo, Sauber. Okay, Sauber, specifically. Sauber specifically. I think if you, as Sauber, right, if you've got one of the best junior drivers in F2, they're ready, especially if he wins F2, because he can't go back in next season if he does win Good it. point, yeah. If he wins it, I don't see how you can go... Ah, yeah, you're good in it, but we'll keep Guan Yu Zhou and Bottas. Mm. You can't, you can't afford to do that as a smaller team. Mm. You can do that as Ferrari because you just yeah, slap yeah. them into a different series or just get them as a reserve driver. Teo Porsche is not going to want to be a reserve driver for Sauber if they finish ninth in the constructors' championship. And also, there's a chance, which wasn't a you chance, just have to get past, him in that they could keep hold of him because, yeah. like with Charles Leclerc, he always that was always a stepping stone. Yeah, because he was a Red Bull. He, he was a Ferrari yeah. junior. Yeah. He was. A Ferrari Junior, so so it was always a step, stepping stone. The yeah. team knew that they knew that right. We're the team that he's going to come to to develop, and then and then move to Ferrari, and, mm. he, and he did after one year. Um, whereas with Audi coming in, Sauber must know. Okay, if we get Porsche in, and he's that good, and he, and he's that guy that he's never, yeah. I mean, so he finished his first year, twenty one. He finished fifth, won two races. Last year he came second, and I mean his last four races he didn't score a point. So. Like for for like weekends, he didn't score a single point. Yeah. So you know that that speaks kind of volumes, right? And and he won what one two he won three races last year. Yeah. And then this year, yeah, he's leading. He's only won once, but he's been consistent. I mean, he's had one two, one two three four five six six P twos this year. So yeah, he he's been like he's been that guy like every single year. And yes, the win hasn't come 
you know, he's not quite been able to win the championship and uh, Drogovic obviously took away with it last year. But I think Porsche has always been competitive, which I think is super important. I think when you look at Liam Lawson's junior career as well, he's mm -hmm. not won everything. But yeah. He's always been like right up there. Every single season, yeah. And that's like, because motorsport, you get unlucky, like things go for and against you. And, mm -hmm. and as long as you're, if you're consistent and you're up there every year, that, that speaks volumes. So yeah, I do think that, you know, if, if you're in charge of that team, because I look at this year and I think Bottas does have the measure on Joe just, mm. but not by much. I look at Joe as a, you know, I don't know if you've seen it, Joe's been um, posting on his socials because he's, he's been um, in, in China and like the support, the, the fans for Joe has been crazy. Yeah. It's like Lando-esque yeah, yeah. over there. <clears throat> like, so that's a huge, obviously growing base. And Alfa Romeo, you know, they, they're the ones who leaked Joe, remember? Yeah. Do you remember the picture? There was a picture, I think it was in Shanghai, yeah, yeah. of D Joe on the side of the Alfa Romeo, like China's first like, full-time F1 driver. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Alfa Romeo, what, like, from a business point of view, and they want to stay in F1, and we'll talk about who they're going to move to in a bit, um, potentially. And Audi also, they did their F1 car launch in Shanghai. Not their launch launch, but they did an event with their F1 yeah. in Shanghai yeah. like a couple of months ago. So you've got Audi who have big ambition to be within China and you've got Joe who is the Chinese, <clears throat> single Chinese driver on the grid who is actually doing better than I think pretty much everyone thought. Yeah, And obviously Alfa Romeo also have that connection with Joe. They're the ones who leaked him in the first place. Mm -hmm. But if Alfa Romeo move over to Haas which has been suggested, rumoured for next year, mm. then could they take Joe with them to Haas? Because then we've got to talk about Hulkenberg and Magnussen as well. We I mean, we need to talk about all four. Yeah, like as, as a collective. Is, is Hulkenberg out of contract as well? Correct. Okay. He only got the one new year. Magnuson, well, okay. And Magnussen, yeah. K-Mag, you're in trouble, boy. I'm not going to lie. K-Mag's K -Mag, in trouble. Yeah, um, I agree. Out of, out of all of the drivers that are out of contract, I would say he's the one where I'm like, if he doesn't pull his finger out in the next mm. two months, it's a wrap. Like, pretty much nailed on. Uh, unless has, yeah. have just, just no ambition in terms of like, well, we've got two experienced drivers, we're going to carry along that line, whatever. But honestly, even a youngster yeah. would put in better performances than K-Mag has this season. Because even if you look at... If we're looking at the car as like mm. a one lap pace guru, but then it falls away in the race, which yep. is fine, you know, there's, there's some cars like that. Hulkenberg is the man extracting performance out of that car. Has K Mag even got to Q3 once this season? Well, so <coughs> Hulkenberg's got to Q3 six of 12 times. He's got a 50% Q3 hit rate, which is the same as Checo, which is mad. Fucking hell. Yeah. That's a stat. I like that. That's good. Yeah, it's good from you. That that's that 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 was in my quiz as well. Mm. Um, yeah, that which is it, it 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 speaks a lot for I think again Nico being under underappreciated. And I think you know he's always had great one lap pace. Um, you know, yes, he's not got the podium, and people like to flog him with that. I think Holkenberg extension is a no brainer. <coughs> I think <coughs> Magnussen is in trouble. I think. Bottas, for me, even though he's got a contract, I think he's potentially in trouble because <clears throat> I think Valtteri doesn't bring that big support from outside and I think his performances haven't been good enough mm. to be like, I'm your guy for like Audi long term. Could I? Yeah, yeah. And this is what I was going to say. If, if Audi were entering Formula One next season... By the way, they already own 25% of the team, Audi. Oh, already. Yeah, fair. Yeah. So they, they will they have a say. Yeah, make a decision. But yeah, go on. Can, yeah, carry on. I think if Audi were coming into Formula One next season, it would be a shoe in for out for the current Sauber lineup to stay the same. I think because mm, uh, because I think you could just about convince Teo Porsche. Look, listen, it's a big brand Audi. You're going to be a reserve driver for one year, then we'll get you in the car, mm. and he'd probably be like, okay, I'll allow that, fine, whatever. Yeah. Or you could you could ship into, him to a different car, into a different series for a year, get him some experience, keep him racing, whatever. And Bottas is kind of like a good, like a decent enough lead driver for a new project for like one or two mm -hmm. years, and then getting a marquee name. Guan Yuzhou, obviously, again, they've got that Chinese market to, to appeal to. But I think because it's 2026, Mate, if we're talking about Valtteri Bottas being like, we could get him out of it instead of Guan Yu Zhou, yeah. he ain't making it to 2026. I'll be, I'll be real with you. Mm. He's not making it another three years of like, 
Let's keep him around. He's going to be the guy to spearhead. This news is not going to happen. No. So if you're, so if you're Audi and Salba collectively, if you're Audi having a bit of a say in the decision, you're probably going, lads, I'm not going to lie. Do we really need Valtteri? Well, there's been a lot of talk of science, hasn't there? Yeah. There's been a lot of talk of science. You've got Carlos Sainz's dad, who, you know, ex-World Rally um, champion. He used to driver. drive Audis in... In rally, he still he still drives Audis in Dakar. Yeah, oh, okay, still does it. Yeah. yeah, so he's he's got that relationship with Audi, and that it's that's been heavily kind of rumored and, and speculated that they'd like a Carlos Sainz um, in their team. Yeah, I, I I think I think Joe will be okay. I think Joe will get an extension. That there, there has been again rumored reports that Joe is going to get an extension um, for another year, which I think he he mer he merits. I think he. I think as a package, I can understand that. Is he the, you know, the next greatest thing? No, but I think he's good enough that I think give him another year. Yeah, I agree. But I do think I do think <clears throat> Boss needs to be concerned. I think I could definitely see him getting switched out. No, I think he needs. I think he needs to be concerned. But hear me out on this one, yeah. All right. If we're suggesting that K Mag, if he doesn't get his get his shit together, yeah. is out of there. We know Haas are on this very sort of experienced driver vibe right now. They're probably not going to dip mm -hmm. into a into a F2 field for a driver. And also, it would probably have to be like a Ferrari-affiliated driver, you'd imagine, if they're going to go to Haas there for they one do. season, whatever. I don't know. There's, there's, I don't think there's a driver Ferrari-affiliated that's ready for next season. Mm -hmm. I think Behrman will be sick, but I don't know about next season. He's still like 17, isn't he, or something? He's Crazy. just turned 18. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, Literally, only just as well. I'm so old. Um, <laughs> how, do you, how do you think I'll feel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I don't think there's anyone there necessarily for the taking. Valtteri Bottas to Haas, mm -hmm. yeah? Experienced driver, consistent, whatever, and you could do a madness with the reveal. Valtteri bought Haas, as in get there. And it's just a print of the Haas logo on his bare buttocks. Boom, easy. He gets a tattoo on there. Say less. That is that is marketing, that bro. Is, you know what? That's that marketing. That's what he's known for right now is a mullet and his ass. And, I, uh, and a decent I'm lo I'm amount. Lost for words. A decent amount of the word has is ass. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. At least seventy five percent of the word is that. Wow. So you're so you're good. That little tattoo, one on each cheek, boom, sorted. There this you must, go. This must be what it's like to watch Messi live. Yeah. Like the G when you see genius in person. What can I say, just, bro? What What can I say, man? That's good. Sometimes you just have to be born with this. That's this marketing good. capabilities. Ass. You're not watching because I'm blocked, but <laughs> if, 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 if Tomo posts this, maybe then you'll see it. Uh, I think that's the motive. Yeah. I think Bottas in, you could do some serious marketing. And it all started when you shouted out Minter's Bunda as well. It did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, it all comes full circle. It all comes full like circle. Like Bottas. Wow. Is, <clears throat> that's, that's incredible. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe. I, I think, again, there, there, there's talk of Alfa Romeo moving over to Haas. Mm-hmm to be title sponsors of Haas because they want to stay in F1. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I think maybe also that could, there's talk of maybe that brings Joe over with them to Haas. But I think that, I think Audi, yeah, I, I, I like the sound of, of, of Joe staying on. I think that, yeah, again, Magnussen's at risk. Hulkenberg's fine. Um, poor share. If he wins F2, He's got to get a seat, surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the one last driver who's out of contract in this year is Mr. Freedom, be that Logan Sol. It is indeed. Um, what do we what do we make of Logan's chances? I think Vows has been very, very kind and generous in the way he talks about Logan. And I think Logan has had his moments. He's clearly not a Latifi. Mm. I think to me that's clear as day. Um, but also, you know, Albon has been consistently outperforming him he's and whitewashed him still in quali as well hasn't he he's the only it's the only whitewash all, all year and also he like is. look I love Alex is he a Leclerc Verstappen Hamilton no he's mm. not <clears throat> so for him to be whitewashing Sergeant like I, it's still pretty convincing as well the gap like yep. there's been the odd moment throughout the year I think Saudi was the, was the one time Logan actually went quicker than Alex but he fucked it up by driving over the line so yeah, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe <coughs> Logan. I, I, I think if Williams had a better car, I think they'd get more 
bang for their buck having an American driver. Yeah. When they're at the back, no one really gives a fuck. It's not really that worthwhile, is it? To be honest. I, I think um, for me, oh, with, with Logan, it's kind of like, at the end of the day, he's a, he, is, he is a rookie. It's not he's a Nick a DeVries situation. You are actually a rookie, yeah? You're a youngster. I think he only had one season in F2 as well. So he's gone straight from F3. Yes. Because he had two seasons in F3. Because he didn't have the budget to go into F2. So he had yeah. to stay in F3. So he so stayed in F3 for one more year, then F2, and then straight into F1. So that is a decent jump up. There's mm-hmm. a, it's a big learning curve there. And I think he did show promise, even from the get-go at Bahrain. That first lap that he had at Bahrain was, was stellar. But um, I think I think race pace, I think he's actually all right. Yep. Uh, he's, he's not been... It's not like... We, we're not looking at him like a Latifi of like, oh, well, we know he's no. going to be at the back. Like, come the end of the race, whoever's whoever's finished, he's going to be at the back. Um, he is like mixing it with the Hasses, mixing it with the Alfa Tauris, mixing it with the, the, the Alfa Romeos. So I don't have a massive problem with him. I think it just looks worse than it is mm. because he's getting whitewashed in quality. Yeah. And Albon is like convincingly beating him each time. Yeah. But I think that's okay for a first season. I think that's mm-hmm. all right. I think he's... Kind of what Yuki had with Gasly <coughs> in his first yeah. year at AlphaTauri. Yeah, yeah. You're kind of straddling the line of like acceptability. Yeah. But as long as you are not binning it all the time, yep. and which he's not, to be fair. No. He's, he's kind of got that out of his system a little bit since the start of the season. And he's not at the back all the time. Mm-hmm. Then I think it's kind of acceptable. I think that's all right. But yeah. I think it's one of those where it's like, right, cool. We've given you your season to to understand how the car works, to to get yourself into gear. Season two, you've got to be at least challenging Alex or whoever your teammate. Well, it will be Alex, but you've got to be challenging your teammate. You've got to be getting a couple points on the board as long as we can deliver you a car that can do that. You've got to try and get the most out of this car because I think if he's still struggling like this into a second season, he's gone for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think, again, I see the parallels with with Gasly and Sonoda first year because I think that final race of well 21 Abu Dhabi mm. Sonoda finished fourth yeah <laughs> no one ever remembers that no, yeah no uh, and, and, and he had a really good race then so I think yeah Sergeant needs to I, I think he'll get next year I think he will but yeah I think he will <sighs> well let's look of those of those seven names who are up for contracts end mm. so let's do like keep being or move right so Hulkenberg keep yeah I reckon so yeah 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 him. Cool. K Mag. Bin. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guy, I love K Mag. Doesn't even get moved elsewhere. Nah, just gone. gone. Nah, bro, he's got to go. I'm sorry. I, I, I actually really like Kevin Magnuson as as a man, not him, but as a man and as a driver, I think he's great. But this season is like really poor. And I, I, can't, I can't see an option opening up elsewhere either. I can't I, 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 yeah. take him on. I, that, that's the thing. I, I, if, if you are not performing at Haas and you're not like a a, a younger driver or whatever. Yeah. There's just not going to be a door that's going to open up. So I can, I can see him going into like, only the door racing. to the bin. Only, only the door. Yep. To the, back yep. to IMSA maybe for Kev. Yeah. yeah maybe. I'll, maybe. I wouldn't be surprised. Hamilton, keep. I've nah, been in mate. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep. I mean, it makes the most sense. Move him to Haas to replace yeah, game. Get, yeah, yeah. True. Experienced driver. Yeah. Experienced driver to be fair to Lewis. Gunter would love that. I think so. That'd be a great combination. Can you imagine <laughs> Gunter Steiner and Lewis Hamilton? No, I can't. Fucking hell. I can't even imagine that. Do you, do you reckon they even go out for drinks or anything? No I, I, don't, I, don't, I honestly don't no think chance. Lewis Hamilton and Gunter Steiner have anything in common. I don't think they've interacted ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, this surprised. is where they're actually just best mates now. Yeah. We're, we're dickheads. But. Exactly. Exactly. Loki, we just completely misread the room. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Let us know. Let us know, Gunnar. Gunnar, if you're out there. If you're watching. Um, Joe? Um, oh, that's a difficult one. Um, I think I'd say... It's it's really... Oh, man. I Ideally, he... I really want him to be beating Bottas at this point just to make it easy because I think the fact that he's still like... Mm, I think keep. I think keep. I think keep. I think that's the best option for him as well. I think I think keep. I, I, <clears> I think <throat> he's done enough to merit... One one third and final year, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. maybe cool. reevaluate, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think if he's still like m- meh, mm. I don't think he's meh now. To be fair, I think he's just above meh. Mm. It's it's hard to showcase as well when you're in an alpha amount. I mean, it's he a had shocking that car, unreal qualifying performance in in Hungary, and unfortunately the car kind of seemed to let him down at the start. So yeah, exactly. Who knows yeah. what that could have been? Um, Ricardo, oh god, move. Actually, yeah, yeah, I'm moving move. to Red Bull. Fuck it. 
move. And if not Red Bull, then going. somewhere else. If not Red Bull, somewhere else. He, yeah, he's you can't be Alpha Tower. Like, oh, Hugo Boss, Bulls Motorsport, no. Bulls Racing. <laughs> I can't see that. I'm sorry. That's some bullshit. Yeah. Fact. Uh, Sonoda. Oh, God, this is difficult. Um, Keep bin move. It's not bin. We're, we're keeping you. He could fit in the bin, to be fair. He's a small <laughs> man. Little, little push, foot, push bin. And you stand in it with headroom. <laughs> so I just pictured my head poking out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh dear me but um, I think I'd love to move him to Aston but it's not realistic so I, I, I think it's just a keep to be honest with you I think he's, he's done more than enough this season to, to merit you know but then ah oh, man no nah, fuck it man I'm moving him to Aston move, he deserves more than Alpha Tauri I think move <coughs> I think I think move after this year I think but where to I think I think if he can stay on the grid then that is the most important thing. Mm. And he's so young still. I think he's still like 22. Really? He's still like really young. Fucking hell. Yeah. He's either 22. I'm pretty sure he's 22, but he might be 23. Um, oh, I would I would maybe move him. I think I think Haas to replace K-Mag would be, a, would be a sensible move for Haas. I think that could be a really cool lineup, Hulkenberg, Sonoda. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think I think move to, move to stay on the grid. Um, and then Sergeant, uh, uh, it, it is, I'm just thinking if there's a, who would be like a better option for Williams right now? Do you reckon, do you reckon, potential upside for Sergeant? I, just, I mean, in terms of experienced drivers, probably not unless someone like a Bottas moves and then you, you've got the option of, of him. Bottas and Albon would be a pretty wavy lineup, to be fair, for a Williams. Mm. I'm not and he did lie. used to be at Williams. And he was there. Well. Yeah, exactly. So he probably knows a lot of the people there. The only other thing in terms of like a, a junior driver, Vesti, if he wins F2, link, link between Mercedes. Mercedes and Williams. That's a point. That's a good point. That, that would be kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. But other than that, I think there's a crazy amount of options just for Williams to go in after. Where um, Vesti finished in F2 relative to Sargent last year. I don't think he was very good in F2 last year. I'm going to be totally real. I might be doing him a disservice here, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't in like the top six. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, incl- I'm inclined to agree. Yeah, he didn't have the strongest kind of debut year, so he yeah. was. Let's have a look. But then neither did like Mick Schumacher, for example. Mick Schumacher mm. was like 10th in his first no, season. No, true. <clears throat> I remember seeing this, like Mick Schumacher only won like 30 something percent of races, which is like by far the lowest percentage of any F2 champion. Mm. Um, yeah, Vesti finished ninth last year. Okay. Um, he got a win he got two P3s I feel like he improved towards the end of the season as well I can't remember off the top of my head I didn't really watch that F2 well, season that much well, you, so he got a double um, P2 at Monza but then yeah. no points in Zanvoort Spa or Yas Marina good so, yeah um, from him. Yeah, I think Sargent's I think he'll I think keep I, I think it is keep I think the but, potential upside because him, him and uh, Piastri by the way like again in F3 that went yeah. down to the line Sergeant was actually head of Piastri and he got very unlucky in was that that was Vesti as well was in that I swear and that was po- no it's Porsche, oh, no, it's Porsche. yeah Porsche um, Piastri and Sergeant yeah 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 they were like the three going into that that title decider yeah in F3 so no, Sergeant Sergeant is good Sergeant is good he needs to get his hands around his car properly I think and it's a difficult car which is all it's always makes your heart, life more hard like, yeah yeah that like Piastri's it, I, I was able to there. showcase himself in this yeah no, McLaren he wasn't able to showcase himself at the start of the year yeah yeah, yeah exactly so, so okay yeah fair we'll, we'll, we'll keep Sergeant and hopefully he can he can improve into next season we'll get a bit more performance out of him we'll keep Loki Bear yeah alright um, for America for freedom let, let's quickly do um, Equal Machinery we've got a slightly different topic uh, this weekend okay sensational um, greatest rivalry of all time Oof. okay nice what are the options so I've got Louder and Hunt oh nice you've got Hamilton and Rosberg oh lovely stuff what honourable what, what, what other um, what other honourable mentions should we uh, should we give to the audience to, mm. to uh, y- if you, you can talk for 30 seconds <clears throat> into the void and we'll definitely hear you yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah so just g- um, give us those ooh rivalries I mean obviously Hamilton Verstappen Hamilton Verstappen yeah it, Hamilton Verstappen is one that's where it's not timer. like it's not like a feud but it's it is like that's the definition of a rivalry rather yeah. than like a I don't know a falling out for example yes. like they, they still very much have respect for each other yeah 
but that rivalry for that season mm. was legendary. Like there will be a film about that that season of Formula One, I reckon. Who was Alonso's biggest rival? Vettel or Hamilton? L Lewis in his first season. Oh, yeah. 2008, sorry. The skinheads. And that that was, that. yeah, Battle of the Skinheads was Goz crazy. Cut. That was like, you know, like Bald Rooney. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, just kicks <laughs> everyone. Yeah, Alonso, a bald, no, <laughs> Goz cut Alonso was crazy. He was a maniac. He didn't give a fuck. Oh, menace. That was uh, great. I can't believe Ron Dennis made them shave their heads, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, of well, I mean, obviously, Senna Prost is, 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 is iconic. Yeah, true, true, actually. All right, well, 30 seconds. 30 I'll, seconds. You're going first because you're going first. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that reasoning. Go on then. Right. Why is uh, Hamilton Rosberg the greatest rivalry of all time now? Well, first of all, it ruined a friendship. These two were, these two were best friends growing up and the, the rivalry was so intense they hated each other by the end. <laughs> Honestly, in an era where there was nothing else really going on in Formula One, Rosberg versus Lewis Hamilton was the definitive storyline for about three years straight. And what I loved is you got the underdog win at the end, but also the creativity and the drama between the two, the accidents, Rosberg and Mirabeau. Genuinely, it was like an East Ender storyline for three years straight. That, you know what? You've, you've solved that well, mate. You've solved that very well. <coughs> <laughs> they were best friends and it that, destroyed that, a friendship. That's real, man. That's real. That's real, eh? Like, yeah. that's actually, and, and you can tell now. Stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. It actually is sad. That is mm. actually true. Yeah. Because even now, when I talk, when I hear Nico Rosberg talk about Lewis Hamilton, I can tell there's a tinge of, I don't like this guy. And that's that's fine. You, you don't have to get along with anyone, uh, with everyone. Sorry, that's not that's not a problem. But it is just sad because they were literally like best also, buddies carting together. I also think there is a tinge of like regret because probably. Do, do, yeah. you, do you remember that first time they were both on the podium mm. and they were like hugging and that and like that was when Nico was in the Williams. Yeah, it's like it's mad how that changed. But like Nico had to sacrifice. Like he had to go all in to like win that championship. Yeah, he had to like you know forget about everything and just focus on that that that, that one that's goal. Why, you know he you, you, you couldn't keep it going afterwards but mm. no, you, you, you told that you told that very well now thank you very right, much well, well louder and hunt in three two one go so intense and so poignant that it inspired the great movie that is rush i think the thing is these two were were two of the first i would say polarizing characters who not only fought on track but they just had totally different approaches hunt was the playboy louder was the the kind of the, the, the fine margins kind of guy and this really showed this kind of set the bl blueprint and standard you know Sed and Prost were very different characters so were Lewis and Nico so uh, Max and Lewis so were all these other rivalries since this was the first one to really set the standard wow I went over 30 seconds. <clears throat> Fucking hell. I that was, that went I, quickly. That, I, it was quick when I was saying I do, 30 seconds is crazy, to be fair. I do waffle, yeah. We, 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 we put ourselves on a, on a, on a time. Now, I, yeah. do, I do think... Yeah, Lunt and Howder. Lunt and Howder. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Lunt and Howder. Lunt and <laughs> Nicky Howder. <laughs> no, that was like... You, you see it so much more now because you see more of these drivers' personalities. But I feel like these were the first two that we really got like a proper insight because their characters were so... I, I was about opposite. to say. I think this is the like... This is the ultimate, like, character. This is why I made such a good film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Rosberg v. Hamilton would not be as good of a... F it, actually, there is a storyline there because of, if you take the childhood friendship route, yes. all of it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which they would, obviously. Yeah, which yeah. they obviously would. That but movie will happen once. I, yeah, I think, I think if there wasn't that element to mm. Rosberg versus Hamilton, it yeah. wouldn't be even close to Agreed. Hunt and Louder because, yeah, you, you just have... I don't think it's actually possible to have two people who are so different from each other. Yeah. Like, Nicky Lauda was so just, like, focused, so, like, down the line, so just sort of just professional, mm. like, from a from a um, classical standpoint. Whereas Hunt was just very much like, I'm going to live my fucking life. Yeah. I'm smoking cigarettes before I go out. Yeah. I'm getting with a new woman every day. Yeah. And it was just, like, so... So, so different. That yeah. must have been so crazy to actually experience as like a, as an F1 fan. Mm. That was probably the same as like the drive to survive effect mm. because you had like new fans watching this like methodical champion just focused Don versus maybe a, a relatable guy in the sense of like just likes partying, yeah. likes women, whatever. 
Um, it's, it probably I had wonder, a similar effect. And I wonder, the film was amazing. So I wonder how much the fans actually saw, like watching on on telly in the seventies. Yeah, how much we actually saw of these kind of characters? Because obviously now we see loads, mm. and we really get an insight. And even then, we still only see what the teams choose to put out. Yeah, but like the drivers post on their own socials. But this wasn't a thing. Like anywhere near a thing back then. So I do wonder as well. I, I think a lot of the stories came from, you know, people around them at the time and not yeah. weren't necessarily mm. able to be fully appreciated by the fans watching. Maybe stories like, that weren't told until more recently and the film exactly. as well. But what <clears throat> okay, so actual greatest F1 rivalry of all time. I think I think for a rivalry to be great, I think it, it needs to stand the test of time. I don't think it could be a one season thing. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I wouldn't put Lewis and, and, and Max in it for no, example because I, I, I think I think that's just a great season. It's a great rivalry, but it's like more I don't know. It, it's more based around that season. Yeah, like I wouldn't call that a rivalry now because no. they're not racing together on track anymore. I mean, there were some cool ones like in, in periods like Montoya Schumacher was oh was, man was pretty cool. I mean, Juan Pablo. I, th I think Vettel Alonso o over the course of years, 2012 as well. But I think maybe Alonso Hamilton. Like I know, I know that's like big recency bias, and I'm not talking about obviously Senna Prost. I think Senna Prost is hard to beat, but I I didn't watch those years. Yeah, exactly. We weren't there for that. So I think for me, my favourite rivalry is probably Hamilton Alonso. Really? Yeah. I think for how long that where it started with McLaren, yeah. and then over the years, like you know, Lewis has always taken a win. Alonso in the Ferrari and like Ham Hamilton that, that 2010 title fight where like Lewis was on the outside of it potentially on the cusp yeah. and I just think over recent years as well like I don't know I, I think that how long that's lasted I think it's great what, what do you think Minton? What, what, what are you thinking Minton? because he's on, he's on the move right now he's what, what are you saying lad? He's, got, he's gone to Uncle Niran oh hello what lad saying? Hey, he heard Hamilton that? yeah that's his kind of trigger word don't you dare jump off don't jump down there lad what are you what are you saying? Greatest greatest rivalry of all time. Your greatest rivalry. Oh, look at this. My this is cute. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, they're bonding. This is this isn't a rivalry. I'll tell you that. <laughs> me, me and me and Minton love each other. Um, I think my it's it's difficult, isn't it? Because it's like if if we're talking greatest, it's going to be like a it's going to be Senna Prost or all loud v Hunt. I think. Mm, yeah. Just in terms of intensity, like overall. Yeah. But I think, I honestly do think Hamilton and Rosberg comes close again because of the storyline and stuff mm, too. True, true. Um, I think I think my favourite one, yeah, I think my favourite one has to be Lewis V. Nico. Mm. I, I just, again, like... Minton. The creativity. Don't jump just, off there. Please, please don't, Minton. Right, come, come back. here. Come back. Do you want a treat? Mm -hmm. Do you want a treat? Go on, lad. Right, come here and you get a treat. <laughs> I think it, it was oh, it was just uh, what's it called? Yeah, it, it's it was the creative. It was just felt like every yeah you're two right. weeks it blew up again. It had that human element that kind yeah. of made it, uh, and I think we we got to see that as well. Cap throwing, yeah, Belgium yeah. hitting each other. I mean, that was like the spark. Mirabeau, yeah, uh, the Monaco one. Then they crashed again in Spain, and it was just like it felt like every month there'd be like a new reason for them to really dislike each other. And it, and it genuinely yeah. during a time where. Let's be honest, Formula One was not that competitive. Mm. It was just Mercedes and that was it. Yeah. There wasn't any was there any other storylines going on at the time apart from like the rise of like the Daniel Ricardo? Yeah, like yeah. That was yeah. about it. It was mm. literally fuck all else happening. Yeah. It felt like that carried Formula One for about three years straight. So yeah. and the thing is like these rivalries don't have to end in <coughs> broken friendships. I mean, it yeah. feels like more now more than ever, all these drivers like get along really well. Facts, yeah. Um like I can't imagine like say, I don't know, say, you know, Lewis retires in a couple of years and maybe Albon goes in as like kind of almost second driver to George. All right, let's just say that happens. Mm. I can't imagine them to, I mean, maybe, who mm. knows, no. I, I guess. But, that, but again, that's that's the human part of F1, you know, like testing these relationships. I'm sure, you know, if Lando and Oscar both had a competitive car, mm. you know, and Oscar's very chilled out and Lando's like, you know, he, his character's great, but that would be interesting to see whether they could... Uh, how they've managed that but let, let yeah. us know in the in the comments if you're watching on youtube yeah um, what is your favorite favorite rivalry? Rivalry? yeah all right let's wrap it there man we've uh we've talked <clears> for a while <throat> we've waffled we've done well minton has uh sat through our waffle i'm sorry i'm so sorry he slept through a lot of he it. slept through a lot of it yeah he was snoring but well, you know a couple points but i don't blame you mate 
Um, and yeah, we'll be back on next week. Next week, this time next week. Yes, we shall indeed. Don't yeah. worry, the content will not stop over this summer break. Yeah, yeah, there'll still um, be stories to talk about. There'll still be stuff going on. Hopefully, some contract stuff next time. We yeah, I'm hoping some silly season stuff kicks yeah. off. I think um, before the end of the summer break. Usually, we do get like at least one, at least one. move before yeah. um, like the end of sort of August. So that's what I'm hoping for. Mm. Don't forget to check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, rate in five star, all that mm, um, mm. on the um, care tag of your Obey um, long sleeve. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can find well. it there. There's a, there's a little barcode and you can scan that and yeah. it comes up with the with the full podcast. So Bosh. But only this particular one. Um, so unless, oh, okay. if, if you don't have that, then you game have to over, steal unfortunately. It. Yeah, you've got to nab it. What are you up to this week, mate? Uh, recovering from being an Ibiza, mm. to be honest with you, mate. Um, apologies for sounding so ill. That is pretty much the reason why. Bit run down, not going to lie. But um, other than that, the football season starts again this weekend as well. So lots of content to come for that. Yes. Indeed, and There's always lots going on. Yeah, up the uh, the lionesses as well. Indeed, Somehow yeah, yeah, managed to beat Nigeria. Yeah, I know that was torn allegiances there. Mm. I'm not going to lie during yeah, that game. Yeah, <laughs> but, imagine, um, yeah. but yeah, yeah, no, it was uh, it was good to see England. It's good to see the lionesses progressing. It was. It's coming home. It's probably not, but it's coming home. If anyone can bring it home, it's them. It is the lionesses. Might be the men. That is for sure. Yeah. Right, thank you everyone for watching. Um, say bye, Minson. Adios, woof woof, and that. Bye bye.